Well, welcome to Weekly Wisdom. And here's the word of encouragement to you today from God's word. Make it right. Make it right. If you've hurt someone, if you've wronged someone, if you've sinned against someone, make it right. Now, certainly God forgives us for all of our sins. But when we wrong another person, and God may forgive us for it, we should still go back and make it right. Listen to these words found in Proverbs chapter 14, verse 9. Fools mock at making amends for sin, but goodwill is found among the upright. Let me read that one more time. Fools will mock you if you're making amends for sin, but goodwill is found among the upright. So here's some simple truths. God is gracious. God is forgiving. When we sin, and often our sin hurts others, but when we sin, we ask God for forgiveness. And if you've come to Him through faith in Jesus, He always extends His grace. He is forgiving of our sins. That's why Jesus died on the cross and rose again. But if we've committed a sin that also hurt another person, part of how we repent or turn away from that is not just confessing to God, but turning from that sin and making things right with the person that we've wronged. And so when we've wronged somebody, it's not enough to apologize to God. We may have to apologize to them for the damage we've done. We may have to actually do something to correct the wrong that was done. And I'll tell a story about that in just a moment here. And then um, if there's no consequences and no cost, we really haven't made things right. We haven't thought it through. And so in my own life, I experienced this uh, growing up. I had a buddy named Howie. And Howie and I uh, got into slingshots one summer. I was probably fourth grade, fifth grade. Um, and we got into slingshots. So we made slingshots with uh, wire hangers and rubber bands. And after a while, that got boring. So we went and bought these wooden slingshots and shot rocks. And that was fun for a while. Then that got boring. So then we went and got these things called wrist rockets, these beautiful bended metal with surgical tubing and a little, a little catch area. And you could put, uh, and, and then they sold it with these uh, metal pellets, little ones and then really big ones. And we started shooting them at that. You want to have a good time, get into a wrist rocket and shoot stuff that you wouldn't hurt. But after a while, I got bored with shooting at trees and different things. And so we, uh, long story short, over uh, an hour or so, we shot out all the four large windows of our neighbor's house across the street. Uh, it was Howie's next door neighbor. They were across from my house. Uh, we did it from a real distance. We didn't really like these guys. We were dumb kids. We shot at all four windows. Then I went away uh, to work at a friend's house up in Pasadena, a couple hours from our house. and. And while we were up there, I got a call from my dad, and my dad said, we're going to come pick you up. You're coming home. We understand that you shot out the Price's windows. And these are the big plate glass ones. Up, they're upstairs, big windows. And I knew I was caught. Uh, they picked me up, came home. It turns out that the Price's came after Howie, the next door neighbor, my friend. And uh, he confessed and let them know that I did it. Uh, he had nothing to do with it. He brought out the first wrist rocket, the little one made by Medley. He said, this wouldn't even break anything. He brought out his first slingshot, and he said, uh, you know, this, this is all I have. He denied having the other ones. And uh, we sat with their family and our family, my parents, Howie's parents, and the Prices. Had a long conversation. My friend swore he had never shot at their windows. It wasn't true. And um, so, long story short, I ended up paying for all four windows. The work I had done at this up, up in Pasadena and all summer long I had to work and everything I earned and everything I'd saved and I paid for all four windows. I said to my dad, this isn't fair. Howie did half of it. And my dad said, well, won't this be a great lesson about making better friends? And, uh, but, but I had to make restitution. I had to make it right. And I look back now as a kid, that was hard because it was money I'd saved. It was money I'd earned that week before. And I worked all summer long doing chores, washing cars, um, making macrame uh, bracelets and, and selling them to neighbors. I did whatever I could. And I finally paid off these four large windows, but I made it right. And that's what the passage says here. The passage says people will mock you for making amends for the wrong you've done, for the sins you've committed. But there's something right about it. And so if there's an area in your life where you've wronged someone, you've hurt someone, you have to ask for forgiveness. You have to make it right. You have to make restitution. I'm not talking about penance like a Catholic church. Your penance gets forgiveness of your sins. God forgives you through the grace of Jesus. But you make things right when you've wronged someone. That's part of the process. Let me pray. Lord God, I thank you for the lessons I learned from my parents who taught me that there are consequences to, to dumb, bad actions and that they had made me make things right. I pray that as followers of you, Jesus, we would know your forgiveness and grace, that we don't earn your grace by making things right. But when we know your grace, we'll do all we can to make things right with those that we've wronged. Help us grow in that truth, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Blessings on you. Have a great day. If you're part of Shoreline, as always, services at 9 and 11 this Sunday. Hope to see you online or on campus. And if you're not part of Shoreline, get engaged in your local church. Serve there. Give there. Love people there. And show the grace of Jesus wherever he sends you. God bless you. Have a great day.